All right, ladies and gents, what a matchup. How many people out there used to pick these civilizations when they started playing the game? In the red, we've got the Tootens for Manilulk. Um, or maybe I should say Tootens. Uh, and then in the blue, we have Byzantines for what's the deal? About 830 ELO. At 800 ELO, you have plenty of defensive players, plenty of offensive players, and plenty of variety. Uh, we are... Also, uh, briefly discussing uh, the AW2 coming to Xbox. That's not like a newish announcement, but if you guys haven't heard about it, there was a trailer today, uh, and so we might talk a little bit about that. A general opinion on that for me is um, it, it seems like it could broaden the player base, right? There's a lot of people who maybe just watch videos who don't have a computer who e could play keyboard and mouse from the Xbox, which would be really good. We did see the teases on like some of the automation. There's going to be a lot of automated stuff if you play on an Xbox with the controller. And uh, I think I just really hope they keep that stuff away from ranked. No, maybe it'll have its own ranked ladder. I just don't think automating certain aspects should be combined with standard. But I mean, it'll be interesting to see. Certainly, as a low level legend caster, there could be some wacky things out there. But so far. Uh, just watching these guys here in their dark ages, seeing if there's anything that really stands out. But it looks like these guys seem to be practicing, right? We see a lot of games these days where players don't make the lumber camps early, and that's one of the biggest things that I talk about in this series. And so both players have done that, and that's going to give them wood for the long run, uh, making farms and buildings and whatever else. Hmm... Red scouting pattern, not bad. Going a little too crazy with it, missing out on a couple goats. That can happen from time to time. Blue, on the other hand, a little bit more steady with the scouting pattern. No big spots are being skipped. I'm very happy with how Blue's playing this so far. In fact, Blue's build order, pretty on par with what you would want to aim to do. Six on food, three or four on wood, make the house, go to the berries. What's next? A boar villager? Okay, not quite. House number three or four, I guess. Okay. Now, Tootens have some good matchups. Um, and I wouldn't consider this a horrible matchup. But I think Byzantines are actually the, the better civilization in the long run. It is a really interesting matchup, though. Because, like, the Tootens have the cheap farms. So, they actually have an eco bonus. And Byzantines don't have an eco bonus to work with. Um... Uh, you know, you do have, like, Byzantines with their cheap camels, but camels lack some upgrades, and then Tootens get additional melee armor, which is kind of nice. Tootens resist conversion, which can be really helpful in some scenarios. Tootens have the Teutonic Knight, which just wrecked the Byzantine Halbs and wrecked the Byzantine Camels. It's an amazing unit. But then Byzantines have the Cataphract, which is great against infantry, which could counter that. So, definitely a Civ matchup that I would consider to be... You know, back and forth Civ matchup where everyone's got their opportunities. Uh, someone in chat says, I'm excited for the change. Now me and my boy can play AW2 together as we have one PC and one Xbox with Game Pass. Yeah, nice. Yeah, like I said, even if you don't end up playing on a controller, like I've got an Xbox. Now I, I've also got a PC set up. I'm not gonna, probably going to be using Age of Empires 2 on Xbox, but there are a lot of people who have an Xbox who don't have a PC who've been like, oh man, do I got to get a PC to play that game? Never mind. I think that that change will be very well received. Hmm. Concerning the general rise of skill, I feel like 800 ELO is almost not low anymore. Still super interesting what happened to this ELO. Well, it depends what you're looking for, right? It absolutely depends what you're looking for. I, I would say that 800 ELO is very strong, yes. Um, way stronger than it was in the past. But I I'd say where things start to get hairy at this elo is right after they click up to feudal like they've got their starts down to an extent but it gets still gets really entertaining and can get really wacky as the game falls apart right about the 20 population for example what's the deals going to stone hmm okay no gold right no no archer play none of the standard plays no we're gonna go to stone instead and we're also gonna go the gold as well also, Blue, I don't know if you guys recognize this name from the Tetris World Championships, but he was actually third place in Tetris as we see the town bell. 
Uh, that's a joke, by the way. Not the town bell thing, but the Tetris thing. He's just kind of smushing that mining camp uh, right in there. Not super efficient in the long run. Usually you want a one-tile gap if you can, but that's going to be some stone income. That's going to be some gold income. And like I said, this is the stage of the game where the games get wacky here at this elo. Now, sadly for red, many people might be able to relate. Ran right underneath Blue's town center. Good reaction time from Blue. But oftentimes they'll arrive to feudal and they don't have an immediate plan. Whereas if you're above 1,000 elo or even at 1,000 elo, they've got an immediate plan. Everything's been pretty smooth. But what I would expect of this elo is I would expect them to know eco upgrades. So they're probably going to research those. Also, this is an underrated move. I suggested for you guys. Uh, Got to pay attention to your bills, but building a mill on the uh, hunt is never a really bad idea. Ooh, blue just missing reds TC. I'm kind of feeling like this is going to be tower defense for what's the deal. That's my guess right now. I used to do that a lot when I got started in this game. Let's see. Oh, blue's going to make militia too. Okay. Over here, we got red making a stable. All right, so red wants to go for a couple scouts. Always feels bad when you're trying to go scouts and you lost your starting scout, right? That just takes you so much further from you know, the original goal. And no eco upgrades for either player. This is where having the cheap farms it ends up being extremely helpful bonus for the uh, for the Teutons. And red makes two stables. Okay. All right. So red's like, I need more scouts, and so red's gonna go double stable. Doesn't have the food to produce any more than just two more scouts after this, but that's gonna be three scouts on the field, and then here comes blue. And kind of scouted the opponent's base. And is coming forward with three Vils and three man-at-arms. Ooh, <laughs> tower rush? Don't see that every day. Scouts, did they see them? Yes, just passing though. Okay, awkward. Tower on the hill now for blue. And blue's just going to protect those villagers. All right. Here comes the scouts here from red looking for some revenge. There's... A weak villager there. That's an easy pickoff. Great reaction time from Blue. Part of the thing about Byzantines is you get Town Watch for free. So you get lots of vision. But, oh, man, there's so many villagers not working now. And now Blue's like, uh, I got to get some spearmen out here. And the bell's been unrung. Panic time in Blue City. Nice job from Red to run away. Nice job from Blue to get back to work and make a couple spears, though. Dang. Now, the economy is much better for red. But the tower rush, man. The position. Oh, the first tower sets up the potential for the second. It protects it, right? If there were to be any type of attack, there's already a tower up. So now red doesn't know what to do. Now, I'll tell you what you do, especially if you're Teutons. Is you just immediately counter tower with all your villagers. But you also don't have loom. Blue is being aggressive. And stressful, stressful times here for red. I'm not even sure red sees the tower right now, to be honest. And Red's going to bring the scouts home. Now, once there's two towers up, you might not want to fight underneath the tower. Apparently, Red does. Is that micro? What? What? That was sick, actually. Okay, Red's going to kill the man-at-arms. Could maybe kill the villagers as well. Uh, this is the problem. This is well executed from Blue. Two towers right next to each other. No one knows what to do about that. If it's just one tower, red scouts are completely fine. But red realizes now his mistake. But okay, here's here's my, my tower rush tip for you guys, okay? The first thing you do when you get tower rushed... I should probably make a video about this, but I don't have the time or energy. So consider this to be a nicely edited video. The first thing you do when you get tower rushed is you send three villagers to stone, okay? That's step one. Step two... If you can immediately counter tower, like if it's already kind of falling apart on you, you you zone them out from future towers, okay? So like right here. Oh my god, it's going to be uh, tower after tower after tower after tower. So you say, okay, you send three to stone, and then you tower here. So if blue goes that way, there's already tower. And then if blue's going to go this way, you can tower here. Or actually, more re realistically, maybe here. Just box them out. And then you go eco. So you go... Or you can make some army or whatever else. 
But yeah, that's my tip. Because now there's potential for blue because there's like really nothing stopping him to just continue to make a line of towers. And that's exactly what blue's gonna do. And red is very stressed at the moment and red doesn't know what to do. What's the deal, he says. But what's the deal's strategy here? This must be so frustrating. That said, he knows about the market. He's got so much on gold. He's actually going to click up to Castle Age here. And so that aspect of this response here is really smart here from Red. Because he wants to go for Knights. I don't know if he's going to be able to afford many with only six on food. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Why not just Tower Rush him in turn? He probably doesn't have an army to defend. You could do that. I Realistically, what I... You know, I, I think it, you're not going to be able to defend yourself and also counter tower at the same time. So if you want more control over the game and build up towards Castle Age, you could make a few defensive towers. So Blue's happy with this position, I'm sure. But Blue is a really long way away from Castle Age. Uh, again, no eco upgrades, really. I guess did get Wheelbarrow earlier. I might even make another tower, but doesn't have the stone for it right now. And red has killed two villagers, lost zero. And red had way less idle time than the TC here as well. Notice only three minutes, whereas blue had five minutes because blue is so focused on all of this. <laughs> the villagers want to make a tower, but they don't have the stone yet, so they're just going to continue to wonder. <laughs> and the market is red's best friend right now. Blue could be in really big trouble. Oh, bot stone. Okay. Interesting. Well, I mean, if the tower is out on its own, it could always be rushed down pretty easily. But we'll see if Red ever even wants to go out there and get the berries, right? Red does not seem interested in this area of the map. I like this from Red. Like, no hesitation. First thing you do, boom, make knights. And now you have decisions to make. Are you going to clear up the towers or are you going to counterattack? I like to go first two knights to my opponent's base and then the rest of the knights clear up the towers. You could obviously clear up the towers first, and then, you know, after that. Why is he going this way? Wait wait a second. Why is he going this way? Excuse me? Okay, it's possible he saw the Vils walk that way, actually, now that I think about it. That was crazy game sense, though, from Red. I think he must have just saw the Vils had gone that way earlier. Let's see if Blue can defend. Blue's getting closer and closer, clicking up to the next stage. Could maybe make some spearmen. This is where having Tutans is nice, right? You've got that additional melee armor, so no upgrades have been researched. But you do have some additional armor here. Mm, more knights heading forward. Still crazy to me what Red's eco looks like with 23 on gold. I think Blue's going to have some big problems here, but if Red were to run into the TC or lose all the knights over time, Red's economy balance isn't great. Blue queuing up more spearmen. Spearmen are pretty cheap for Byzantines. And even though the melee armor is great, you've still got a pretty nasty situation at home if these knights don't get the value for you. And now we have stone being purchased. God, Red's in love with the market. Holy crap, man. Red, mine the stone. It's right there. Red says, nope. As Red kills villager number six. Red is a big fan of microing with those knights. It's the same thing we had seen with the scouts earlier. Why mine the stone when it's right behind your base and you've scouted it when you could simply just buy the stone? 200 more stone has to be purchased. As crazy as Red's play is right now, he has got himself out of hot water with this market play. Um, you would obviously want to strive for a little bit more balance. But man, oh man, does this game get interesting. Where are these villagers going? Is he going to castle drop blue with everything? <laughs> That's not going to work. Blue has a lot of spears on the way. Oh my god. Red is like, you want to castle, you want to tower drop me? I'm going to castle drop you. I think. 24 villagers out of 38 are just standing here waiting for orders. I mean, it is, you are Teutons. Oh, man, I love the guts here from Red. I love it. I mean, there's so many things in this game. Sure, maybe you shouldn't try and do if you want to become a pro someday. But this, this game's about having a good time. Let's go. Send a message.
And also maybe keep the knights away from where you want to drop that castle. Right now, it seems like he feels like he wants the knights where the castle's going. But if you're going to lose these knights, you want to lure the spearmen away from here. Away from here. <laughs> Now, Blue does have Town Watch, and this is going to get interesting because he gets Town Patrol in 20 seconds. <laughs> Where's the person who said 800 isn't low elo anymore and crazy things don't happen? <laughs> oh, this makes me so happy. Okay, look at Blue's vision, though. You're picking the wrong Civ to Castle Drop. Red, how sneaky are you going to be, bro? Just drop it. Your opponent can get pikemen now. Oh my god. <laughs> He's going the long way around. And I guess he lost his main gold. So he wants to take the main gold of the enemy. But for the love of god, man. Your eco efficiency is really bad. They actually need to collect resources. And he's still running round and round with knights. So I have to give him a lot of credit. That can't be easy. These villagers are almost finished with that gold. And here we go. Here we go. And and credits of red. He's actually making some house walls here just in case blue had an army to try and stop this. And that castle's gonna go up. We have ourselves a crazy game. And then red will have so much gold. Guys, red has the cheapest farms in the game and only has three on food right now. Red hasn't taken berries. I, I cannot wait to see the eco balance stats after this. Now, I don't think blue exactly knows about this right now. Um, Blue's gonna find out in a moment. Uh, all, all these units are gonna die, though. Oh, that's painful. Oh, that's so painful. That's so sad. What a way to find out. Oh, boy. Tootin Castle. Free murder holes. Teutonic Knight! Where are your cataphracts, Blue? Oh, the KP boys are here. Uh, also, the Spearman did kill the Knights on the towers, so Blue's towers will stay up. Forward TC from Red. Classic. And Blue just resigns! Blue just resigns. Oh, you know what I was hoping for? Is that Blue would have a little bit more fight and send the Vils across the map this way and then drop a castle here. But dang, what a comeback here from Red. That was crazy, man. <laughs> oh, man. Red must be feeling so good about life after that. It took so long for those villagers to get there. But the number one thing that brought red the win it wasn't the castle it wasn't the market it wasn't the scout micro it was commitment red just committed like there is a beauty to that i know we talk about balance a lot balance for the long term but red said screw that dude look how much he used the market he committed all his bills on gold and he was just buying and selling buying and selling buying and selling buying and selling and then he said, all right, I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to research eco upgrades. It's not going to make more farms. I'm going to just buy and sell my way to a castle drop forward. And Blue, who, you know, got a couple eco upgrades, trying to maybe think about the long term and the normal things in the game, just got completely surprised. And Blue said, I can't deal with this anymore. Dang. Now, I wonder, does Red do that every game? Or did Red just decide to do that because of the tower rush. Because I'll be honest, that was like more extreme market usage than I think we've seen it at this ELO before. 3,300 gold collected, and the game was how long? 29 minutes. I mean, I guess that's not that crazy of a stat for normal games, like higher ELO games. But yeah, I mean, 20 minute castle age, all because you used the market. Let's look at. Um, Food, compare food gathering last minute. Okay, gold gathering last minute. <laughs> Woo! That's the way to win the game. There you go. Just get a market and a bunch of gold. And you can tell... You can tell when he sent the villagers forward. <laughs> um, actually, can we see... Productive worker time? <laughs> Whoop! It just dips down when he sends the villagers forward. I'm actually surprised it's not lower, to be completely honest. Yep, there's the unproductive worker time. Thank you, Capture Age. Wow. I bet you Blue feels a little flexed on, but but there's nothing more satisfying than castle dropping someone who towers you. A tower rush is not a fun strategy to face up against. Uh, well played there from Mono. Mono-y Mono.
How fast were they? Oh, yeah, look at that speed in Dark Age. What a beast. <laughs> so at the conclusion of that game, uh, Blue just resigned. No GG. Obviously a little disappointed. I, even if you're frustrated, credit your opponent, guys, okay? Credit your opponent. Drop the GG. But anyways, he doesn't. And Red says, ha, 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 ha. Lob me your strategy, 11. Red was having a great old time with that. So, Blue doesn't drop the GG. Red laughs a little bit. Blue is probably gone. That just confirms how happy Red is currently with his life. 